The production of elements heavier than iron require energy, compared to the production of elements up to iron, which in fact release energy during their fusion processes. The extra energy to produce heavier elements come from neutrons that hit existing elements. So there might be one element existing here, and then there are neutrons hitting this one element. Now there are two different um, possibilities how this element is hit by the, the other neutrons. Either there's a rapid succession of neutrons hitting the element, and thereby producing heavier elements, come to this in a moment, or there's a slow succession of neutrons hitting this one element. This depends on the environment. For example, in the environment after supernova explosion, this environment will be flooded by neutrons, and there will be then a rapid succession. But um, as I said, these are two principal possibilities here. So one is a rapid succession, and this is then called the R process, so rapid succession of neutrons hitting an element. And the other possibility is a slow succession of neutrons hitting an element, and this is then called the S process. So we distinguish between these two here. So what does this mean for nucleosynthesis, and how does nucleosynthesis work with these two processes here? And this can be illustrated looking at the chart of nuclides, which is shown here. So on the x-axis, the number of neutrons increase towards this direction. And along the y-axis here, the number of protons increase. So basically, the various chemical elements are stacked upon each other here. The chart of nuclides is systematics for, for the nuclides, not for the electron shell, which is the periodic table. Now let's start with um, looking first at germanium here. And let's ignore this gap here for a moment. And in more specifically, we look at germanium-74. Now this germanium-74 is hit by a neutron. And this then produces this germanium-75, which is, as you can see, an unstable element. It will have a, experience a beta, de beta minus decay, so an electron decay, um, thereby producing this 75 arsenic here. Now, in order to produce 76 germanium, another neutron needs to hit the 75 germanium. And whether that's possible or not, of course, depends on first um, the half-life of the germanium 75 and how often it is hit by a neutron. So if the half-life is very short and it is hit by neutrons in slow succession, it will not produce the germanium 76. But if it's hit by rapid succession, it will produce the germanium-76. Now, in general, the half-lives of these elements to the right is rather short, which means that it is unlikely that if the element is hit, or the nucleus is hit in slow succession, that um, germanium-76 will be formed, which means that in an environment where there are only with a slow succession of neutron hitting the element, um, the germanium will basically always decay to 75 arsenic, and it's not possible to produce the 76 germanium. So the 76 germanium can only be produced if the element is a hit in rapid succession. So this is a nucleus or nuclide isotope that is only produced in an R process um, environment, which means this is a nuclide that is purely R process. So the nuclides are distinguished into R process and S process, and most of them are R and S process. But in this case, for example, this is purely R process nuclide. Then, of course, it's also possible that not germanium, not only germanium 76 is produced, but all these other nuclides. Well, depending on half life, of course, if there's a germanium that is, has nanoseconds half life, then it's not possible to produce all these, and it becomes less likely to produce these, of course, as well. But in principle, it's possible this way. And thereby, it's possible to, for example, then um, produce something like um, bromium here, or uh, in this case, for example, strontium, or in this case, this krypton here. So this krypton is looking similar um, as this germanium here that could be produced by R process this direction can also be produced by R process this direction. And of course, all these other elements here um, can also be produced um, by R process. So the R process 
works into this direction and then by decaying into this direction all these elements, stable elements can be formed together with these kind of elements here, which can be formed in, in these two ways as just explained. So these are the two different possibilities here. Now in the specific case of germanium here, there's this gap, but it must not necessarily mean that all these elements can only be produced by our process, because a slow process might produce this germanium, then this one decays into this direction. This can produce this gallium by S process, which can then decay to germanium, so this germanium can be produced in an S process here. So these two processes, S and R process, um, produce most of the heavy elements here. However, there are then a couple of other stable um, nuclides elements, these ones here, that can apparently not be produced by either the R nor the S process. Because the decay direction beta plus is this one here. Um, so it's not possible for the krypton that something decays into this direction because it's always this direction here. And um, this is um, still a matter of debate how these form. One suggestion was here that it might be that if you look for example um, krypton here, that a proton is added to the krypton, not a neutron but a proton, which put then produce this rubidium here. And um, if again this occurs maybe rapidly, the strontium might be produced in this way. The same here. Um, and because this was an assumption in the past, this process is called the P process. There are, however, other possibilities that have been suggested how this can be um, formed. But still, the, the processes to produce these, these isotopes here um, is collectively called P-process. And also this is apparently quite a rare process because these isotopes here are among, um, so on this side here, these are among the most rare isotopes, stable isotopes we have. So these are the main three processes, R, S and P-process. Um, to produce all the stable isotopes heavier than iron, up to uranium, thorium, bismuth, and so on, um, that happen usually in, for example, environments like after supernova explosions or something like this.